I bought this pre-built from Best Buy three years ago, and ever since I bought it, I've had multiple issues, but I've kind of just dealt with them. First issue, the PC would randomly start sounding like an airplane about to take off, and I would get a black screen, and I would have to manually shut it off and on so it would go away. The GPU and CPU are damn near at 100% usage, and again, while playing, it sounds like an airplane. Last and final issue, the gameplay can be a bit choppy sometimes. I think that might be the lack of RAM, but I don't know. This here is that viewer's br what well, is it? Is it really broken? I guess, I guess it's not really broken. It kind of is. Maybe it overheats? I don't know. Oftentimes with builds like these, when components start running hot, weird things can happen. You get black screens, you get random program crashes. Sometimes your system will completely shut off in an effort to save itself from further damage. In this case, well, it doesn't sound like it's all that extreme, but I can tell you just from looking at it that uh, we have a few areas of concern. For one, this CPU cooler, you probably noticed that right off the bat. I'm not even sure who manufactures this. It honestly just looks like a stock Intel cooler with like an aftermarket mini fan attached, but it's definitely underwhelming even for this caliber CPU. Second, this particular RTX 2070 Super, while decent on paper, is plagued with the blower style shroud, which means that uh, while it's going to run a bit hotter, that's just normal for it, and it's going to run a bit louder. Only a single blower style fan back here. And thirdly, this case is not exactly airflow oriented. It's got a very small fan mount here, definitely smaller than 120 mil. There aren't any fans up front and in fact the owner tried to mount some couldn't make it work and to boot the front panel is rather restrictive so bit of a hot build all around thankfully though these are fairly easy issues to address i just hope those are the only issues with this are you ready stay with me WireView is an innovative new product from Thermal Grizzly designed with the goal of measuring and logging GPU power consumption. It connects simply into your PCIe power arrangement of choice and is capable of displaying values such as current and peak power consumption, voltage, amperage, and even average power draws over 60 seconds. You can even buy them in multiple orientations to fit cards with either standard or flip supplemental power connectors. But WireView isn't just for data junkies like us. Its sleek design can even help clean up the look of a build and disarray, allowing you to run your cables across the top of your graphics card's backplate for a stealthy cable vibe. So be sure to check it out along with other Thermal Grizzly products via the link below. Hello there and welcome to Fixer Flop. In this playlist we attempt to fix viewer systems for free in the Orlando, Florida area. Um, it's been going pretty well so far, but a couple times I've been stumped. I've definitely learned a lot along the way. And What are my hands doing up still? Um, and uh, in this case here again, apparently an overheated system or one that likes to overheat has a tendency to do so. I think it's rather obvious why, but uh, we need to see that firsthand with our own eyes. So I'm going to power the system on here and power it on up front. I expect it should appear stable from the get go because, uh, well, that's what the owner told us. And it does look like it is loading rather quickly into Windows. Wow, that was extremely fast. And uh, now what we're gonna do is run a few burn-in tests. I'm, I'm not sure which needs more attention, either the CPU or the GPU, probably both at this point. Wow, uh, look, all I did was open a single Google Chrome tab and it's already quite loud. Sorry, I know I'm giving you guys whiplash. You okay, Raymond? Whew, yeah, no joke. Anytime I do anything on this guy's desktop, I can hear this fan just spool up. It is quite loud. So I've got ID64 Extreme loaded up. We're going to go ahead and start the stability test. We're stressing everything except for local disks here. And I want you to pay special attention to the, wow, okay. Already 72 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Celsius. This is CPU package, by the way. 89 degrees Celsius, okay, yeah. That's definitely our point of concern right there. It, that was weird. As it dropped to 73. And it's just gonna stay there? What? So there's some sneaky things going on behind the scenes with this rig. Firstly, the graphics card actually seems okay. We did notice that the drivers were a bit outdated. That could explain some of why he was maybe seeing a higher than normal GPU usage, uh, but I don't see any concern with temperatures. Even in this Heaven Benchmark stress test, uh, you can see temperatures are in the mid 70s, which is perfectly fine. In fact, that's fairly impressive for a blower style card like this, and our frame rate is also very respectable. So we updated those drivers. We should be a-okay there. I'm not in the business of handing out free hardware all the time, and in this case, since we're just trying to fix things that are maybe behaving incorrectly or that are broken, 
the graphics card is going to stay the same. We might just clean it up and repaste it. But as for the CPU, this is where we get some mixed signals because you saw right off the bat, temperatures jumped up to about 90 degrees Celsius, which I'm not surprised by because the cooler is fairly weak. And well, Ida is stressing it. I mean, it's not gonna be as crazy as something like Prime 95, but when your CPU is under a heavy load, especially while gaming or running some synthetic tests or maybe even content creating, you should expect your temperature to increase because your voltage increases and your frequency increases as a result of that. But here, if we look at our statistics, you can see that our current CPU frequency is around 3.5 gigahertz. And this is the case for all of its cores. Now its maximum was around 4.5 gigahertz, which is to be more expected of a Core i7, even an F SKU. But essentially what's happening here is the CPU is being throttled. Ida64 isn't telling us that, 0% CPU throttling, everything looks healthy and okay. But in reality, we're leaving a lot of performance on the table because our CPU is having to scale back frequency in order to keep temperatures in check. And part of the reason why it's doing this is because the motherboard is telling it to. This is something we could override in the BIOS if we wanted, but all that would do is just give us a CPU running at 90 plus degrees Celsius, which is also no good. Speaking of the motherboard, um, I have a few reservations, let's say. I'm not joking when I say this is the most stripped down set of rear IO ports I've ever seen on a motherboard. We're talking two USB 3.0 type A ports and two USB 2.0 type A ports, and that's about it. We get our little, you know, microphone headphone jack down here and an RJ45 port and that's it. It's mostly just a metal plate, <laughs> which uh, is indicative of the quality of this board. In fact, if we look at the VRM MOSFET area of this motherboard, you can see many things are just completely left unsoldered in an effort to cut costs. This is probably one of the cheapest MATX motherboards ASUS manufactures. Now, as much as I'd like to replace every potential hardware issue down the line, the motherboard included, I have to be resourceful and strategic with what I upgrade because we go through so many of these episodes, there's so many folks in the area who need help. And uh, well, I'm only, I mean, I've only got so much stuff that I can really hand out. I have to be realistic about that with, with all of you especially because some of you like to bring up, why didn't you upgrade this or that? I just, I don't have uh, hardware trees growing in my backyard. Um, so I think that the most important thing that we upgrade here is the CPU cooler. Hands down, it just makes the most sense. Secondly, I don't think the CPU cooler that I want to upgrade them to is going to fit in this case for one, and I also don't think that uh, this case is best suited for getting air into this CPU tower cooler that we're going to upgrade them to. Uh, so it doesn't really make sense to upgrade one without the other. We're going to upgrade the case as well, and I think that's where we're going to leave it. We're going to repaste the CPU. At this point, we could repaste the graphics card, but I don't really see the need to because the temperatures are already fine. It's going to run loud regardless because of the blower design, but uh, I don't see a need to, to risk taking things apart on the graphics card side. I'm going to leave that as is. Ooh la la, yes sir, an Antec Performance One. This thing has such good airflow, especially compared to where we're coming from. And as for the CPU cooler, a Be Quiet Dark Rock 4. And we'll pair this with the case and, oh, it's just gonna sound so much better under load. First things first then, we gotta take everything out of the old chassis. This will be a while. And before we go any further, we gotta clean some of this stuff up. A lot of surface dust, especially on this graphics card. This platform is up next, and although we'll be removing the cooler, we'll clean it up a little bit anyway. And a few other things while we're here, because, well, why not? Wowie, what a world of difference. I didn't show you guys how rough it was earlier, but you can see from this B-roll clip, I was literally scraping away dust from this case, and it was also all over the top of this PCB. Go ahead and take this old cool, oops, old cooler off. I think that's how you're supposed to do it. You just pop it right up. It's just like an old uh, stock Intel cooler. It's just a, a bit of a pain to... Just, uh, there we go. And, uh, well, paste doesn't look too bad. It's just, there's not enough of it. I'm gonna gently lower our Dark Rock 4 on top of the CPU and, uh, Got new paste, of course, as well. So that alone should help temperatures. Things are lined up and we'll just tighten her down with two remaining Phillips screws. Looking good. Now let's throw it all into the case. Here she goes. Move out of the way, you fan cable. And it looks like things are already lined up. We'll just tighten it down and uh, get the rest of the stuff in here now. You know, 
500 watts is a pretty low wattage for a 2070 Super Rig. I just don't know why this was built the way it was. And I feel like I'd be pretty upset with myself if I didn't correct some of their mistakes with this one. And the power supply is just one of those that I don't want to send back to the owner in its current state. So power supply upgrade as well. I think 650 watts is the recommended minimum from NVIDIA for a 2070 Super. We're gonna give them a thousand anyway. In she goes then. So uh, this is turning into quite the upgrade episode. I know some of you guys do not like that, but uh, I just, I, I couldn't let it go. We, we, we had to get rid of that weaker, questionable power supply from a rather questionable brand, if you ask me. Just gotten most everything wired up, and uh, last thing to go is the graphics card. This is definitely going to look a bit weird because this uh, smaller motherboard has its upper PCIe slot, the full length one, pressed right up against the CPU socket. So it's all gonna look scrunched in one little area with a bunch of dead space down below, but what can you do? Eh, not my proudest upgrade. It does feel a little just mismatched because we have a larger case now, and of course an MATX motherboard, and that motherboard is really driving me crazy. This thing doesn't even have standardized USB headers. Again, another reason why I think it's a proprietary ASUS board. It's not one you could just buy off the shelf from Amazon or Newegg. And without upgrading that, we're, we're kind of just left with our hands tied a bit. I did look to see if I had a board to swap out with this one, but I just don't have anything that old anymore. It has to be a Z470 or equivalent board for 9th gen Intel. And the oldest I have is 10th gen currently, which is not compatible with 9th gen. So, um, you know, again, at risk of just like completely rebuilding the system, which is not the point of this series, I know. And I know some of you are going to harp on me about this. Um, I just, I can only really work with what I'm given. And this pre-built, assuming that's what this is, it just cut so many corners that you know, we're kind of dodging bullets as we're upgrading this thing. And that's one of the reasons why I don't like pre-builds like this. I mean, you can tell just from the start that this was definitely curated kind of toward an ASUS theme. Obviously, the case itself has a lot of ASUS branding and the motherboard is rather restrictive. It is what it is. Let's at least make sure it powers on. Alrighty, so far so good. All the fans are spinning. I did have to use a few cable splitters because this motherboard only has a single chassis fan hub, which is pretty ridiculous. Looks like we are loading straight into Windows 11, which is a good sign. Again, we have both of the drives connected. Of course, the M.2 we didn't remove and the hardest drives in there, which I assume is just for games and the like. We didn't change any hardware, so I'm not sure why it's doing that. We changed the CPU cooler. We didn't change RAM or anything else platform related. Windows 11. Now after about 15 minutes or so, you can see CPU temperatures in yellow are under 60 degrees Celsius. Now again, I think the motherboard is throttling us quite a bit. I think actually it's a power throttle at this point. I think there's a power limit on this board and any higher than this and it would just start choking things. So I don't think it's thermally related like I did earlier, although we definitely improve thermals. Uh, we could probably tinker in the BIOS a bit and get these frequencies up. But for now, this is a much more comfortable temperature and the system is running significantly quieter as a result. The mic probably won't pick this up because well, it is running very quiet, but we've added four fans to this system and it's a lot quieter than it was before, which is a pretty difficult thing to do uh, since we've got the 3140s up front, they are running at a very low RPM, very respectable. Same with the rear exhaust fan. The only thing that's loud in the system is the graphics card. And like I said, there's not gonna be much we can do about that because of the blower design. That just about wraps this one up then. You know, I've used this analogy before, but I can only fix what I can see. It's a bit like if you bring your car into a mechanic and you complain that it maybe shakes at 50 miles an hour. Well, if the mechanic takes that car out and doesn't feel it shaking at 50 miles an hour, what is he supposed to fix? And in this case here, I was told of some instability while gaming, but you see, I've left this Ida64 stability test run for over an hour without issue. No crashes, no hard resets or anything like that. That might have been power related. Again, I can't I can't know for sure because I wasn't able to replicate those even when we had the original unit in the original case. 
But what I can say is that from what I'm seeing here, everything now looks very stable, temperatures look much better, and most importantly, the system is a lot quieter. You know, sound is definitely one of those subjective things. Some folks don't care how loud their systems are because maybe while they're gaming, they have gaming headsets on, and so it's all kind of isolated, right? But if you have speakers, let's say, or maybe you just want to have your system idle on a desk while you're doing something else in your room, I mean, his system was very loud even at idle, which was something in my book that needed to be addressed. Beyond that, again, there's not much more I can do. I think we've definitely set him up uh, for maybe a platform upgrade down the line. I think the card is actually okay, especially in 1080p. I just, I'm not a big fan of the blower style design, uh, but uh, yeah, definitely a platform upgrade is gonna be due here soon. And then uh, I'd probably upgrade the graphics card next, but at least he has a much more formidable power supply now, a much more reliable one in my opinion, a beefier CPU cooler he can take with him to that next platform. And well, that just about covers it, doesn't it? Thanks so much for watching. Again, if you have a broken system, you live in or around Orlando, Florida, you wanna have a chance to have it fixed for free, like we saw in this video, be sure to submit a form linked in the video description. If you are not already subscribed, be sure to click that red subscribe button. Raymond will put it somewhere here on screen. Give this video a like if you thought it was cool. I didn't already say that, did I? And uh, yeah, leave some feedback in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought about this one. You know, this one was kind of rough and it did kind of leave a weird impression. Um, it, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have elected to fix this one because the issues were a bit sporadic. And depending on who you ask, you could make the argument that this person was just fishing for free hardware. Uh, but I do think that in the original state the system was in, it needed a few things swapped around. And it's just a shame that this rig had to ship the way that it did with such a weak cooler and such an unwelcoming case. And that's all for me. Thanks so much for watching. My name's Greg and thanks for learning.